population wins wars. Just like the other faction needs babies, an adage in the world of Foxhole. But is that really true? In the case of the babies, sure. But what about the population balance? Luckily, we have some data so we can take a closer look. Back in 2024, Hayden from foxholestats.com released data on the wars 63 through to war 111. These data included, among others, player numbers per faction, players in queue per faction, occupied town counts, and whether or not a faction had warning screens. All these data points were recorded with 30 minutes intervals. So there will be two data points for each in-game day of the war. After splitting the data into individual wars, and some of the data split further for our convenience, we can start our investigation. Since we are interested in population balance, or imbalance, we look for player data. We have several player number related data points available to us. Player total, players colonial, players warden, cute colonial, and cute warden. A quick summation of the player numbers and the cute player numbers shows us that a player total is not the total amount of players in game at the time of recording the data. More likely to me seems that this is the total amount of players that have been in game in the last 30 minutes. I do not know this for certain though. Since we are interested in the population playing the game, we will calculate our own total player count with blackjack and hook. We will calculate our own total player count. For this, we simply add the amount of colonial players and warden players and leave out the cute player numbers to know how many players in total were on the playing field. With that total player number, we can calculate the percentage of in-game players each faction has. We simply divide the amount of faction players by the total amount of players and multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. Then, to see the imbalance in what percentage of player each faction has, we subtract 50 from the percentage we just calculated. This way, we know that if a faction has a negative number here, their in-game population is below 50% of the total population. And if they have a positive number, their in-game population is above 50% of the total in-game population. So for instance, here in War 63, on in-game day 1, there were 317 colonial players and 398 warden players. Together, they form a total player count in-game of 715. 317. Colonials, divided by 715 players total, multiplied by 100, shows us that the Colonials have 44.3% of the total in-game population. Subtracting 15 off of this, we see that the Colonials are 5.7% below an equal split of population. This also means that the Wardens therefore have an in-game population that is 5.7% above an equal split. Charting this, we get a nice dividing line at zero that signifies an equal population split. So if both faction lines would be at zero, we'd have a perfect 50-50 split in population. And the further apart the lines are, the more unequal the split in population. Calculating this for all the wars and looking at the chart, we see all kinds of different results. Wars where one faction clearly outpops the other. Wars where it is very erotic, erratic. Wars where the overpopulation flips from one faction to another. And wars where it seems to be a runaway effect. To get a better handle on this, let's first determine for each war how much time of the entire war the winning faction had a higher player count. We use a very crude method for this, where every time the population difference number we calculated earlier is above zero as an instance of overpopulation. Every time this happens, we assign a value of 100. When it is zero or below zero, we assign a value of zero. Then we can simply take the average of all these values to get the percentage of the time the winning faction spent in overpopulation. So as a conceptual example, if we have a war with 10 data points and the winning team had overpopulation in six of those, we get a value of 600 and divide that by 10 to get a percentage of time spent in overpopulation of 60%. When we run this for all wars, we can see that it covers a big range from the colonials overpopping the wardens 99.1% of the length of War 97 to the same colonials spending only 41.5% of the time in overpopulation and still managing a win in War 100. To make the visualization a bit easier to understand, we subtract 50% so that a value of zero would mean that the winning and losing faction both had equal amounts of time spent with a higher population. A value above zero means that the winning faction spent more time in an overpopulation situation, and a value below zero means that the winning faction spent more time in an underpopulation scenario. We can now easily see that besides War 100, there are three other wars where the faction that won did so while spending more than half their time with a lower population. War 71, War 81, War 95, 
and again War 100. To check if they did have a massive player surplus during the times they did outpopulate the other faction, we simply calculate the average overpopulation percentage for those times. To be clear, this calculates the average population percentage only when the winning faction was outpopulating the other faction. Using this, we can see that in War 71, the Colonials, who won that war, had an average population difference percentage of 2% during the 46.7% of the time they were outpopping the Wardens. And the Wardens also had an average overpopulation percentage of 2% during their 53.3% of the time when they had more population than the Colonials. In War 81, we see that the winning Colonials had an average overpopulation difference of 3.6% during the 46.1% of the time they were outpopping the Wardens. And the Wardens had an average overpopulation difference of 2.6% during their overpopulation runs in this war. War 95 saw the winning Colonials with an average overpopulation difference of 3.1% and the Wardens with an average overpopulation difference of 2.5%. And in War 100, the Colonials benefited from an average overpopulation difference of 4.2% during the 41.5% of the time they were outpopping the Wardens, where the Wardens only had a 3.3% average population difference when outpopulating the Colonials. To see how this affects the entire population during a war, we simply calculate the average overpopulation difference of the winning team. Having done this for all wars, we see that War 71 and War 100 are the only wars where the winning faction had a negative average player balance, both at minus 0.1%. We also see that in little over half, 53.1%, of wars, the average overpopulation difference for the winning faction is between 2 and 5%, and that in 40.8% of the wars, the average overpopulation difference is less than 2%. To check how erratic a war was in its population balance, we can simply check the range of overpopulation percentages. In other words, we subtract the lowest population percentage of a faction from the highest population percentage of that faction. So for instance in War 88, the Colonials at their peak had an overpopulation percentage of 17, and at their lowest they had an underpopulation of 1.7%. Combined that means that the difference between the highest and lowest point is 80.7%. Even though this seems to indicate quite some difference, if we look at the chart of the war, we see that the colonials basically outpopulated the wardens the entire time. So it is a nice indication of variation for a single faction's population, but not great for judging how much the population flip-flop between the factions. To find that out, we want to basically know how often we see a reversal of player population. So whenever we go from a situation where the collies outpop wardens to a situation where the wardens outpop the collies, or more specifically, in this case, we count the amount of times when a faction's overpop difference turns from negative to positive or the other way around. So for instance, like here, where in War 88 at in-game day 2, the Colonials go from a 0.3% underpop to a 1.2% overpop. Or on in-game day 16, where the Colonials go from minus 1.1% to 0.9%. Whenever the flip occurs, we simply assign a value of 100. For all other instances where the population difference stays negative or positive, or changes from or to zero, we assign a value of zero. Averaging all these assigned values, we get what I would like to call a variability percentage. Calculating this for all wars and plotting it, we see three wars standing out with a very low variability. War 78, 88 and 97. Looking at their overpopulation difference charts, we see that those wars were absolutely dominated by one faction. War 78 saw the Colonials outpopping the Wardens 99% of the time. In War 88, the Colonials outpopped the Wardens 97.1% of the time. And in War 97, they outpopped the Wardens 99.1% of the time. On the other side of the stick, we see War 65 stands out as a war with a high variability and the further we get in the timeline, the lower the variability gets. Where War 95 stands out as the last war with a variability of above 10%. If we however look at the absolute amount of population flips, in other words, simply count how many times the faction balance flipped from one faction to another, we see that for instance War 100 also stands out with a total of 164 population flips. And if we plot war length onto it, we see why. It was a long war. This does not necessarily mean that a longer war means more flips though. War 109 and War 111 were similar in length, but War 109 had almost twice the amount of population flips.
The fortunes of war are a fickle thing. In our quick glance of the population chart, we also noticed that some wars saw a reversal of population balance. To check for this, we can run through all wars and, semi-arbitrarily, decide we compare the first 33% of the war length with the last 33% of the war. In the beginning 33%, we check if one of the factions was in overpopulation for at least two-thirds of that time and see if that pattern reversed in the ending third of the war. Running with these criteria, we see that War 70 and 71, 90, 93 and 100 saw a reversal of the overpopulation. In War 70, for some reason on Wednesday, February the 17th of 2021, the Colonials lost a lot of players in a four-hour period. They went from having 54.3% of the total population back to having only 35%. They basically stayed in underpopulation until the last day of the war, where they were back on top and ended the war as victors. War 71 we encountered earlier as one of the wars where the winning faction was the faction that spent less than half the war in overpopulation. It is the Colonials that started the first half of this war being underpopulated, but on Sunday the 7th of March turned things around and managed to eventually win the war. War 90 starts with a slight advantage for the Colonials in the first third of the war. The middle third is very erratic, and finally in the last third the Wardens take the advantage and secure the victory. War 93 in the beginning third is not as clear cut, but shows a nice advantage for the colonials. But once the population starts reversing in the middle, we see the Wardens running away in population in the final third stretch of the war. With a total of 6.6 .6 million casualties and a length of 57 days, War 100 until today stands as the most brutal war in Foxhall history. The Wardens enjoyed the general overpopulation in the first half of the war. In the last third of the war, however, there are two very distinct periods where the Colonials outpop the Wardens and manage to win one of the greatest comeback wars ever. Well then, what is the conclusion here? See, that is the beauty of it all. That is all up to you. If you're the glass fully empty type of person, you can point to the average overpopulation chart and say that only 4% of the wars were won by the faction that had an average underpopulation. And that only by the skin of their teeth. If you're the glass somewhat filled type person, you can point to the time in overpopulation chart and say that 8% of wars were won by the faction that was outpopping the other faction for less than half the war. If you're the glass half full type of person, you can point to the five wars that saw the fortunes of war reversed and say, maybe this war, we are in one of those. And if you are the skeptic or curious type of person, you might say, I want to do my own calculations. In which case, there is very good news. In the description below are the links to the Google Sheets containing the raw data and the cleaned up data with my calculations and charts. A big thank you to Hayden for releasing these data, they were fun to peruse. As always, a big thank you to Crowd9er for running over some first iterations and attempts at prodding these data and trying to make them into a story. And finally, a big thank you to Quinn, without whom's feedback a video would have been out way earlier, but also would have been way worse and more biased.